this class. <clears throat> Today we are going to learn topic 29, Newton's method. And this is a topic that's not going to be on the AP test, but college professors expect you to have learned it by the time you get into your multivariable calculus class. So I want you to think about it. How do we find the solution to equation if we don't know how to solve it by hand? And you also don't have your graphing calculator with you. Well, we want to approximate the solution to f of x equals zero by finding x values really close to the actual solution. Well, how do we do that? And I will let you know that by doing Newton's method, this is what your calculator does when you ask your calculator to find the zeros of your function um, to solve an equation. So, step one. Pick some x value near the root of f of x equals zero. We call this the initial approximation x sub zero. So here is our function, the red curve, and we're going to pick an x value near the root that we want. That is x sub zero. And we'll draw a tangent line. So step two is to write the equation of the tangent line at x sub zero. So in this case, it's going to be f of x sub zero plus the slope of the tangent line at that point times x minus x sub zero. <clears throat> Notice that the tangent line crosses the x-axis at a closer x value to our solution than x sub zero. We call this x value x sub one. So here is x sub one. Step three, find x sub one by plugging in x sub one comma zero to the tangent line equation and solve for x sub one. So I'm going to plug in x sub one for regular x and zero for y. <clears throat> and I am solving for x sub one. So when I do that, I'm going to subtract the f of x sub zero and divide by the derivative at x sub zero and then add um, x sub zero. <clears throat> Step four, you're going to do it again, but with the tangent line for x sub one and then you're going to solve for x sub two. So it will look like this. So now you're going to use the x value x sub one and write the equation of this tangent line and then you're gonna solve for x sub two. And then you're gonna do it again. So you get x sub two. <clears throat> so if I was to do it for this one, I would get that x sub two is equal to x sub one minus f of x sub one all over f prime of x sub one. If we continue this process, we will get a sequence of numbers that are getting really close to the actual solution. And this process is called Newton's method. So there's, if we were to do it again, and again. So <clears throat> Newton's method is an algorithm procedure for finding roots or solutions to the equation f of x equals zero, provided f is a differentiable function. The algorithm is let f of x be a differentiable function and let x sub zero be an initial approximation to the root r of the equation f of x equals zero. So then we can compute x of n plus one to equal x sub n minus f of x sub n all over f prime of x sub n for n equals 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. You continue this process until you get two successive approximations that have the same first eight decimal places or if you are told when to stop. <clears throat> if the actual solution is r, then as x of sub n gets closer to r, as n becomes larger. Then we can say that the limit as n is going towards infinity, these n values, of x sub n equals r if the limit exists. <clears throat> 
Now there are two musts when you do Newton's method. In order for Newton's method to work, <clears throat> you have to do two things before you begin approximating. The first one is f of x must have one side equal to zero. The second one is to have an initial approximation x sub zero. And your book uses x sub one for the approximate for the initial um, approximation. Really doesn't matter. <clears throat> now you can find x sub zero by either sketching a graph of the function and guess a value that looks close to the solution. And for those of you who have the TI 84s or 83s, if you recall when you find the zero with your calculator, after you do the left and right bound, it then gives you that guess. That's what they're actually asking you to guess for, is an initial solution. If you have an interval, use the midpoint of the interval. When does Newton's method fail? <clears throat> Newton me Newton's method can fail if the derivative of the initial solution is close to zero, or an approximation falls outside of the domain of f. So for example, when f prime of x sub zero is close to zero, notice that the zeros of the tangent lines get further away from the solution that we want. So if this is the solution we want right here, if I start here at x sub zero and draw my tangent line, notice <clears throat> that my tangent line crosses further away from where I want, and it would keep doing that. See, that's even further away. That's not what I want. I want them to get closer and closer to this value. So what that means is I should have chosen an initial value that was not close to basically where a horizontal tangent line would exist. I would have probably been better off choosing an initial value down here. All right, let's look at some examples. <clears throat> Our first example is for each of the initial approximations, determine graphically what happens if Newton's method is used for the function and a function whose graph is shown. So if we were to pick x sub zero, if our starting one was at zero, we would notice that the tangent lines get closer to a slope of zero. Newton's method would fail if we wanted to approximate this. If I started here, my tangent lines actually are going this direction and crossing over here. At initial value of one, the tangent line uh, is horizontal, so Newton's method would fail as well. At x sub three, eventually the tangent line will become horizontal, so Newton's method also fails. Because if I was to draw tangent lines, you'll see that my tangent lines will cross over here. At x sub four, I get another horizontal tangent line, so Newton's method fails. At x sub, at five, sorry, the zeros of the tangent line get closer and closer to six. So this time Newton's method does work. So if I was to draw little tangent lines here, each tangent line would get closer and closer to this zero. Well, let's use Newton's method to approximate the third approximation with the given initial condition. <clears throat> so first thing is I want to find the derivative. I want to find x sub one, which means x sub zero minus f of x sub zero over f prime of x sub zero. So when I do this, x sub zero is one. When I plug in one to the derivative, I get one. When I plug in one into my original function, I get negative one. So that means my x sub one is two. Now to get x sub two, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna use x sub one to find everything. So when I plug two in for x sub one, I get three from my original and eight in my derivative. I simplify, I get 1.625. Since I'm looking for the third approximation, that means I can stop. My first approximation was my initial, second approximation, third approximation. So I am done. 
Now let's use Newton's method to approximate the root in the given interval to six decimal places. So I'm going to first find the derivative. And I need an initial value. So since I have an interval, I'm going to use the midpoint, which is 1.5. To find x sub 1, I'm going to do the following with 1.5. And after plugging it in everything, I get the following. Now the reason why I extend this out is because I need the first six decimal places to be identical. And you need to store this in your calculator. <clears throat> So now I'm going to do, so this is my first one. And this A is what I stored it in my calculator. So I just set it over off to the side that in my calculator, A equals my X sub one. Now I'm gonna do the same thing for X sub two. And I get the following. I'm gonna let that be B in my calculator. I'm gonna go ahead and approximate X sub three using this value for x sub 2 and I get the following and I'm going to store that into my calculator as c and you will notice that we are starting to get some repeating decimals in our x values and now I'm going to do x sub 4 plug it in and I get the following for d in my calculator I'm going to do it again and notice this time I have six decimals that are the same. So that means I can go ahead and stop. And I can say that the root is 1.283782 to six decimal places. Well, I hope you enjoyed um, learning Newton's method and um, understanding what your calculator does when you ask it to do this. And I will see you in class tomorrow. Have a good night.